Okay, so in this video, we will prove a result that is long overdue. The result being that any linear system always has either no solution, a unique solution, or an infinite number of solutions. The idea in the proof is to rewrite, as we have seen in the previous video, the linear system in the form a times x equals b. So that's our starting point. Given any linear system, we can always rewrite it in the form a times x equals b, where if you remember, a is a matrix of coefficients, x is the column matrix of variables, and b is the column matrix of constants. Now we have an obvious statement, right? And the statement is the following. Either one of ABC must be true. Either the system has no solution, a unique solution, or the system has more than one solution. Either A, B, or C must be true, right? You can only have no solution, a unique solution. If it's not no solution or a unique solution, the only thing left is, well, more than one solution, so two or more. Well, okay. Think of our statement. We're trying to prove that any linear system either has no solution, that's part of our statement, uh, or a unique solution, also part of our statement, or the only case that we have to transform is show that if we have more than one solution, so two or more, automatically we have an infinite number of solutions. So we can assume that we are in the third case, case C. If we have no solution, we're done. A unique solution, we're done. Let's prove that if we have more than one solution, then the system automatically has an infinite number of solutions. And the proof using this form of a linear system will be really slick. So we assume that we're in case C, so we have more than one solution, therefore there are two or more. Well, so let x1 be different than x2 be two solutions. And of course two different solutions as we are under the assumption that we have two or more solutions. So, what does that mean? Well, a times x1 is equal to b, and a times x2 is also equal to b. As both x1 and x2 solve this equation, a times x equals b. And the idea now is from these two solutions, we will construct an infinite number of solutions to the equation a times x equals b. Consider now x being equal to x1 plus t, where t is any real number, times x1 minus x2. Now if you think of it, because x1 is not equal to x2, then x1 minus x2 is not the zero column matrix. And so as we let t vary over all real numbers, this will vary over an infinite number of column matrices. So we have here an infinite number of possible values of x as we let t vary. And let's prove that for any choice of t, this is a solution to the equation, which will prove that we have indeed constructed an infinite number of different solutions to the linear system, and this will be our conclusion. Well, let's check. a times x equals a times x we constructed as x1 plus t times x1 minus x2. We can distribute, so a times x1 plus a times t x1 minus x2. Well, first observation, x1 is a solution to the equation, and so ax1 is equal to b, plus, well, t being a scalar, we can move it up front of the multiplication, so plus t times a times x1 minus x2. 
we can now distribute b plus t times ax1 minus ax2 but both x1 and x2 are solutions to so the equation ax equals b so ax1 equals b ax2 equals b and so what we have now is b plus t times b minus b but b minus b is obviously the zero column matrix if you multiply the zero matrix by a real number well you get the zero matrix back and if you add to the vector b the zero matrix you get b back and you see this proves that x is a solution to the equation because ax equals b and this completes our proof for any choice of t the column vector the column matrix x1 plus t x1 minus x2 is a solution to the equation ax equals b and as we have previously said since x1 and x2 are different this is not the zero column matrix and so as we let t vary over all real numbers this will give us an infinite number of different solutions and that's the conclusion so we now have the following statement a system either has no solution or a unique solution or two or more solutions but if we have two or more solutions we can easily construct an infinite number of different solutions which proves that a system either has no solution, a unique solution, or an infinite number of solutions.